All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Silver Bullet Live Show. I'm Rob, joined by two other people. Got the owner, creator of the Silver Bullet itself. Uh, go ahead, Sherry. Say hi. Sherry Jensen, USA. <laughs> All right, and then we also have Michelle. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle. I'm SEO and SMO specialist for Silver Bullet Cutters. All right. So if you're brand new to this format, all you have to do is type in your question and Michelle and Sherry, they're tracking all the questions. And we're going to go ahead and go on with this little presentation. And then at the end, we will stop recording and flip on everyone's microphone if they want and allow you to control the microphone. You guys can actually interact with us and ask your questions live uh, via voice as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. So, of course, there's the Silver Bullet machine, and this this uh, presentation is going to be about the Surecut sure Slot program. Uh, this, the current version that is out is 4.26. The new version came out a little over uh, you know a little over a week ago, or came out this past weekend. And one of the key highlights that came out of this, they introduced the Spiral tool. So if you haven't used it, we're going to be talking about it today in this presentation. So, yeah, Surecut Slot 4, that's the one that we're going with. So we're going to be talking about the tools, and we're only going to be talking about these tools right here that you see here, which is the Draw tool. You have the Freehand Drawing. You also have the Brush tool, the Erase tool, and then that bottom one is going to be the Shape tool, and we'll talk about that here. So we have the we have the Draw tool, okay? So that, that's going to be the first one we're going to be talking about. That's where you can actually use that Pen tool, and you can click, 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 and make your shapes. And... We're going to show you a couple ways to make make these shapes, okay? So as you can see right here, this is uh, just a point and clicking, and I put radar on here for the mouse click, so you can see that I'm, I'm simply just clicking it and releasing, and because you get, actually get a different effect if you do a click and hold, and we'll see that here shortly. So right here, we're just doing the zigzag, and we're going to go ahead and close off this path here, and you'll notice that it is closed off because the shape will actually fill in. So I'm just going to hover my mouse right over that last, that last little node there, and that closes off that shape. So that's that's just the the simple version on what you can do with the pen tool. And then uh, some other tips that you can have here, and we'll show why this is important here a little later, is you can actually hold the shift button down, and you'll be able to move this line in 45 degree increments. So right there, you know, that's zero degrees, and we can move on up. There's 45, there's 90, and so on. So uh, that will help you draw straight lines without having to worry about how your mouse is acting. All right. So what happens when you actually hold down your click while you're dragging? So that, that will actually give you, um, you know, a curve. So we'll, we'll check that out here. W with this right here, we're just going to go ahead and uh, click. And then right up here, or you'll see this little radar, I'm, I'm holding down that mouse button. And it will go back and forth, back and forth. And that is how we can get a curve using this pen tool. So, so now with those those lines there, we've introduced curves, and uh, there, there's various types of curves. So that's what we're going to talk about next. So there's four types of curves on the draw tool. You'll notice uh, up at the top, and you'll see that you actually have options up here, and uh, they have four different options. So you have corner, cusp, smooth, and symmetric, and that's from left to right uh, as we're describing it right there. So we're going to go take these one at a time. And I think the, the best one to talk about first is going to be the symmetric because we basically already saw this one, okay? So it's that one right there. That's the symmetric one. And as you're drawing this, you know, the left the left pull handle is growing at the same size as the right-hand side. So that is the symmetric the symmetric uh, curve. Okay, so let's let's check out some other ones. So we have the corner and I think the best way to demonstrate this one is we already have a shape on there, this heart, and we can select that node, actually, and we're not using the pen tool, we're just using the, the path adjustment tool here, and we click the cusp button that you see up there. So that is what, I'm sorry, the, the corner, not the cusp. So as you can see, that will make a nice sharp corner. You don't get any of uh, those pull handles, whether that be left or right and they, they shrink down. So that is what the corner one's for, to make, make nice sharp turns instead of curves. So the next one we're going to talk about here is the cusp, and that one is this one right here. And this one will give you one pull handle, and it will sort of, uh, you know, remove the other one. So same, same example here, uh, clicking the heart, 
And as you can see, I get one pull handle out of this. The, the other one has uh, basically is, is right over top of that node. It, it uh, doesn't exist as a pull handle until you um, can move that line. So that is what that does. So the, the smooth, so what, what smooth will do, it will give you control of both handles. Okay, so there's the smooth one. You know, sometimes you don't want to have a symmetric uh, shape. You know, you want to you be able to move those handles individually. Okay, so that's, that's what that will, will do. So as you can see, it doesn't matter if I, if I uh, pull left, pull right. The, the right side is staying where I left it as far as the length goes. So that's what that one does. So now, now we have the four curves. Uh, next, we're going to be talking about how to create a simple score line. So this is an example of a box, and we want to place uh, a simple score line on there. And we're going to use that technique where I hold the shift button down. So as you can see right here, it's just moving all the way around. But if I hold the shift button down while I'm doing that, I can go ahead and close off that line. And to close off that line, all you have to do is hit, hit the escape button or the delete button. And the next thing I need to do is I need to make this a score line, right? So over here on the right-hand side, with that line selected, you can actually alter that line, that line style anyway, by going to there, and you can see the dash lines. So that's what how you can make a, a quick, simple score line if you're trying to add them to maybe a card, maybe a box, so in this example. So hopefully that may help you guys out. All right, so uh, another way to use the pen tool is actually to do a manual tracing. For this one, I actually went to File, Place, Image. Uh, sometimes uh, in Sure Cut Slot, your trace may not be that great or may have too many nodes, and you may want me, you may get better results if you actually you know, hand trace it. So that's, that's what this thing's showing you, that you can use that pen tool in order to trace items. And all, all we're doing with this is we're making sure that those those pull handles are tangent to the shape and you know so it, it just goes off in a tangent and then we're just going around that shape and once you close this off here you'll be able to see the shape and if, if it's not perfect you can always go back to that path editor and actually use that to shift shift around the design so as you can see it's not perfect but I can use that little, little uh, path shape shifter and it will um, make this curve fit over that that color there. So that's how you can also do this, uh, you know, using that pen tool. So the, the next tool that we're going to talk about here is the freehand tool. So the, the best results uh, for not only this one but the paintbrush is if you actually have one of those pen tablets. And you, you'll see here shortly in this, this demo that I'll, I'll give a quick comparison of of the mouse trackpad and then the free hand using a pen tablet here. But we do have a little menu option up here for smoothing and you can adjust this number because sometimes you, your hand may shake or your mouse may shake. And what this will do with the, with the final product is after you create it, it will try to smooth out the lines for you. So uh, you can adjust those values as necessary to get the right way. So this, this right here, uh, I'm just using the mouse pad just trying to do my signature here. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty shaky, pretty wobbly. And now I'm going to be using the pen, pen tablet and where you can just draw as if you're signing something normally. And it, it, it comes out better. And especially with the smoothing, it, you can see the difference. So you, you can use this. Uh, you can create your signatures. You can use uh, the, the silver bullet you know, pen tool and this will this will act as your as your pen tool uh, path to use. All right, paintbrush. Like I said before, it's you know the best results use use your pen tablet. And with this one, we don't get smoothing options, but we do get a brush size. And the, right up there at the top, that's where you can adjust it. And that is your brush size that is displayed on your uh, as your mouse cursor. Okay, so in this example. You know, I was trying to think of ways that you may want to use this. You know, I'm not a drawler. So, you know, say I wanted to fill in that hole real quick. All I'd have to do is fill it in with a paintbrush. I can select the entire object here and I can go to path union. I know there's other ways to, you may want to break it apart, but uh, that, that was a quick, quick, simple seal. And as you can see with the cut preview, that circle's gone. So, 
uh, just a quick little demo on that. This one here, like I said, I'm not an artist, so you, you know you may want to draw some smoke coming out of a chimney. So it, it's it's mainly there for um, for you to you know for you artists that are out there. The the eraser tool, it's pretty. You know, I was I was trying to think of a ways to use the eraser tool other than to erase an object. You know, but uh, when you choose the eraser tool, you do get some options. You do get the circle and the square, and you can adjust the size and also uh, take note of the keep closed uh, keep closed path here we'll, we'll show a little demo on how you would use this so the the closed paths uh, this is going to be me trying to be an artist again so we have a block of cheese and we'd like to make it look like cheese so you can use the eraser to create your own cheese here you can use, and I'll show you here that you can adjust the size of the brush to give you that uh, to give you smaller cheese holes basically and of course, like I said, uh, the, the eraser tool, uh, you know, if you don't like the cheese at all, you can just, just wipe out the entire drawing, okay? So eraser tool does that just exactly that, it erases. So one of the cool things that you can do with, with the open path anyway is I wanted to show an example of a, of a butterfly. So I got the butterfly from the library, actually, and that's, uh, that's already built into shortcuts a lot. I add it to my mat. And one of the things you have to do uh, with this anyway, I wanted to hide that bottom square so that uh, the, the eraser, because the eraser doesn't care about layers because it, it will go all the way through. And you, you want to hide that square. So you can do that with that little eye that you see down there in the bottom right corner. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And I, I sort of want, I want, the but, I want to make a butterfly that is still attached to the card. And I chose square up here. Size I kept the same, but uh, th this is right here. This is where you want to keep closed paths, okay? And you'll see here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And it's not going to take a chunk out of the butterfly. It's just going to erase that part of the line. So I can do that on all four sides of the wings so that when I go and cut this thing out, you you'll see here after, after this is that we can... Uh, we'll, we'll cut it out of the of the cardstock here, and this is what this is what you get is you know little butterfly wings that is still attached to the paper and can still uh, fold out. So you can get a 3D effect if you wish, and still have that butterfly on there. And I mean, you saw how thin that was, and uh, thin of a line that was, and it was it was cut with a silver bullet and still still left us with uh, with part of that wing attached to the paper. So. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so one of the last tools on here that we have is the shapes. Okay, you'll notice this little black on the little black corner on the bottom right, and if you know anything about Scal, that means hey, there's more menu items on there. Okay, so this is where that new spiral shape is found. You also have a square. You also have polygons and star. So, like I said. You know, you click and hold on that square and all these options will appear. I'm only going to talk about some of them that will give you actual, actual menu items on here. So the polygon, you can choose where you want it. And you can increase the corners there. So for polygons, it just gives you the corners. The, the next shape that we're going to talk about here is the star. And the star gives us a little more options. It allows us to choose how many points as well as how we want that inner radius to be. You know, do we want... A fat star, do we want skinny pointy stars? And so that's what that will do. All right. So the the next item that we're gonna show here is the new item, which is the spiral. Okay. So the spiral gives us a couple more options that you'll see up there at the top. We have the amount of turns, we have the divergence, and we have the inner radius. Okay, so there there's you can see you can increase and decrease the the turns. And then the, the, the divergence, you can see that grow and shrink in there. And then the inner radius just removes that part of the inside of the spiral. And, of course, you can choose whether or not you want this to go clockwise or counterclockwise. So what are the cool things that you can do with the spiral? Uh, well, well, first, let's go with the warning here. So when, whenever you're using the shapes, uh, shapes anyway, you want to make sure that once you add a shape and you have to be happy with that shape okay so 
if you're not happy with it as far as how many pointed stars it is uh, and you move to a new tool you cannot go back and say oh, yeah, I want to add another point to this star you know, or I want to add a new side to this polygon you're, you're not going to be able to do it and you're going to try to adjust those numbers and all it's doing is it's adjusting for the new shape so as long as you have that shape active when you first do it you'll still be able to edit just fine so that's, that's a little warning using the shapes. So, uh, so some cool things that you can do with the spiral here. So we have some text, and we went to the effects, and then we went to object to path. And you can actually put it on the path here. So you can reverse the path if you want, have it go out on the outer edges. You can change the start point, all, and all you have to do is hit the OK button to, to accept it. Okay. So... Uh, you know, you may be thinking, well, Rob, that's great, but I don't want to line up all those pieces by myself. So here's another quick tip, um, and this comes from Kay from Clever Someday, is you can actually use this thing called Magic Mesh, and it allows, I mean, it's, it's sticky enough to keep the, to hold the shape, and then you can add your glue and then uh, simply press down on the pieces so that they all retain the shape that it was originally cut at. All right, so that uh, that basically wraps up the tools as far as what we talked about. You know, so we talked about the draw tool, the freehand drawing tool, the brush tool, and the race tool and the shape tool. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. And it, of course, if you want to know more information about this, uh, you can always go to silverbulletcutters.com. Uh, there's also we're also on YouTube. You can check out the YouTube, and that's where. Uh, you can find all of our webinars. If you're interested in the Silver Bullet, they have the distributor links on that website, silverbulletcutters.com, depending upon where you are from, uh, de determines where you can uh, get this from. So Sherry deals with the USA. You have Dawn uh, that does UK, and uh, then you have your Australia as well, Joe. There, there's also uh, videos on that website, and as well as a great photo gallery to check out what all cool designs you guys can do.